The weekend just gone saw the annual running of the London to Brighton charity bike ride, um, in which thousands of cyclists from all ages and abilities cycle from Clapham Common to Brighton, um, including the um, unfathomably difficult uh, Ditchling Beacon when it's that far into the ride. It's an uh, incredible, incredible ride. They raise a lot of money for charity um, and it's well worth doing. Um, this year also marks 10 years since I did the ride and that was my first big bike ride after giving up smoking after so many years. Um, I still have the medal. It's only a, only a little medal there, there's a bit of focus. But it, I kept it. I kept it because it was uh, a big achievement for me at the time and it got me to thinking you know, what were the things that I thought about when I started cycling and what things would I pass on to someone who had just started it? What are five things? A lot of people have done these videos, so hopefully my five things are different. Numero one, wear what you want. There are a lot of people in the cycling space that will tell you, you have to wear Lycra, you can't wear team kits, you can't wear a rainbow jersey, you must do this, you can't do that. Your sunglasses have to go over, the, the straps have to go over your helmet straps. You have to wear white socks, Mike. There's a lot of people that will say a lot of different things. The truth is, wear what you want, get on your bike and enjoy riding it. Especially at the start. It When you start riding a road bike, especially, the thought of cramming yourself into Lycra is quite a daunting one and yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say I was too up with that. I've, I've got there over a long time. So get yourself a pair of liner shorts and some mountain bike shorts and a technical top. Get on your bike and ride it. The only top that I will not wear is a rainbow jersey because that is a world champions jersey and that is the one jersey that I believe any cyclist has to earn. Number two, get a radar backlight. These days, in the UK especially, the roads are a nightmare. There are potholes everywhere, there's angry drivers, there's inconsiderate drivers, there are cyclists who are pretty bad. So Garmin do a Varia light radar that I have on the back of my bike and it tells me from about 140 feet away when there's a car coming and it shows it as it gets up to me. I have found this incredibly useful, not only on flat roads to know when cars are coming, but also, especially now, avoiding potholes. It is so good to have that extra check when you see a pothole coming up, just to have a little glance to see if there's something coming up on your outside, if you need to swerve around it. A couple of times, seen a pothole, seen a car coming out the outside, so I knew I had to bunny hop it. That, that will come with time, I advise slowing down first of all. But they are well worth the investment. Number three, get insured. Simple, get insured, get personal liability cover as part of it. Don't, don't go out cycling without it. Last year in March, I managed to go down a hill, skid, didn't stop, went straight through the back of a, a lady's back windscreen. Um, cut all my face up, as you'll see from the pictures. Um, but I had insurance with lacquer uh, and they sorted everything out. Um, as I went through the back windscreen, if I didn't have personal liability, it would have been my fault and I would have been liable to cover all the damages and it would have been about 500, 600 pound that I just didn't have. So get insured. There's a load of people out there that do bike insurance. You can do it for British Cycling, um, but there's loads of others. Um, I can really recommend Lekka. Um, they've been great to deal with. Um, good company, clear. It's a co-op, so you never pay over your premium, but if claims are less in a month, then you'll pay less. Um, so I, I would highly recommend them. And just to give yourself a peace of mind, just in case anything does go wrong. Number four, get lost. 
Go out on your bike. Go get lost somewhere. Everyone's got phones these days. You've got Google Maps. You can find where you are. Go down that road. See what's down there. Sometimes you come to a dead end. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you might find the nicest stretch of tarmac that you've ever seen in your life. You don't know unless you try it. You can use all of the route planning software and websites that you like. Um, they will show you uh, heat maps for roads that are used and roads that people like using, especially commute, that's good for that kind of stuff. But sometimes, even on a normal loop of where I live, I'll go down the road just to see what's down there because you never ever know what you're gonna find. Number five, learn to fix things yourself. Bikes are expensive things. And when they go wrong, they can be expensive things to fix. But the majority of things I've found over time, I could learn to do myself. YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful resource for this from learning how to index gears, to changing brake cables, to all of the different things that you need to know about. It's a great, you'll find a video that will tell you how to do everything and it is well worth the time learning from the basics of how to wash your bike properly all the way through to full servicing. It's, it will save you money, it's enjoyable to know these things and they're skills that you can pass on. So I have two boys, I've started to teach them how to fix things on their bikes. Um, so they are, they're transferable skills if you like. So definitely, if you get a problem or there's a noise, find a few videos, see if you can fix it yourself. As a last resort, go to your local bike shop, that's what they're there for and they'll be happy to help you. But give it a go, honestly, you won't regret it. So those are my five things, out, probably outside of the norm that people will tell you, these are five things that I did when I started cycling. I um, hope you enjoyed that. If you are searching about cycling and you find this video and it's been a help, then you know, please, like and subscribe and all that youtube jazz um and there'll be a few more videos coming on different things um a few ideas in the works and hopefully me and this new osmo 3 will do a little bit more um so see you next time